Hey guys, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're gonna be doing a electricity question. So question 8.1 says, state Ohm's law. The definition I'm gonna give you might be slightly different to the one that your teacher has given you. How is that, Kevin? I thought there's only one definition. That is not true at all. I can show you five different textbooks and all of them will have a slightly different definition. So your teacher will tell you that there's only one, but that's because your teacher probably used the same textbook for the last 634 years. Whereas I have used many textbooks because I teach learners from many different schools. The one that's most popular and the one that your teacher probably uses would be the following. The potential difference across a conductor is directly proportional to the current through the conductor provided the temperature remains constant. So that goes from the following formula, V is equal to I times R. So we can see that the potential difference, which is voltage, is directly proportional to the current and then just make sure that the temperature is constant. Moving on to 8.2.1 for five marks, calculate the total current delivered by the battery. Now, they didn't make it very clear in this question, but we can sort of see that there will be no internal resistance. They didn't mention anything, but usually if there is an internal resistor, they would have like a dotted line maybe, or they would have something like a little resistor over there, for example. So then we're not really gonna use the EMF formula um, we'll rather just use the normal I equals V over R. Now, we know that the total voltage of the battery is 12, so we could use a 12 there, but now because we're using the total battery voltage, that means you must use all of these resistors. Now, just be careful. Some of you are gonna say that a lot of these are in parallel. Now, you are correct, but you must just be careful which ones are in parallel because you might say this, this, and this is parallel, but that's not correct. The way to work it out is the following. Electricity flows out of the positive, okay? So that, let's imagine you, we are little electrons. So here we go, here we go, here we go. Have we had to split yet? No, we haven't. Whoops, all of a sudden we get to this little point over here, and this means we have to split. So some of the electrons are gonna go this way, and the rest will go this way. They'll all come together again over here. Actually, let's do this in a different color. Let's say that the main current was in green. All right, and then all of the current is gonna meet up over here again. They're all gonna be like, hey, how are you? Long time no see. And then they're gonna carry on again through there, and they're gonna carry on. So the green part is part of the main circuit. And then the blue and the pink part, those are gonna be in parallel. So I'm gonna go, those are in parallel. Pretty cool what I did there, huh? <laughs> I'm just messing around, guys. Okay, so those are in parallel. So what we're gonna have to go and do is we're gonna have to go and add these together in parallel first. But you need to be very careful we must realize that in this branch over here, those two resistors are in series. So they must first be combined into one, okay? So, and so if we did have to combine these, it would be 18 ohms. And so what we've actually done now is we've got the circuit would now look like this. So you've got the 12 ohm over here. Then there's a total resistance here now of 18, sorry, 18 and then we've still got the four, the battery, like that. And this is a 12 volt battery. So that's what we look like now. Remember these three are not in parallel. It's only these two that are in parallel. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these two and we're gonna work out what their parallel resistance will be. So to do that, we say one over R parallel is equal to one over 18 plus one over 12 then you type the right hand side in on the calculator and that gives us five over 36. Now to get R parallel, you switch this side upside down and you also switch this side upside down and so R parallel is 36 over five, which is, if you look at that on your calculator, 7.2 
ohms. And so what that means is that these two together are 7.2. So if you wanted to, some students like to look at it like this, we now have a circuit that actually looks like this. We've got this one, which is 7.2 ohms, and then this one, which is four. Okay. And so those are in series. And so if we wanted to work out the total resistance now, you would just say 7.2 plus four, and that would be 11.2 ohms. And so that's the total resistance in the circuit. So let's just write that down in case we need that a little bit later. So let's write that here. Our total is 11.2 ohms. So remember why we were doing this. We were trying to calculate the total current. So we know I is equal to V over R. And so the total current would be the voltage of the battery divided by 11.2. And if we round that, that'll give us 1.07 amps. Question 8.2.2 says the power delivered in the 10 ohm resistor. We know that power is voltage multiplied by current. It also has the formula V squared over R. It also has the formula I squared multiplied by R. So because we know the resistance of this one, I would definitely not try use this formula. That would just take too long. So the way I think, I think the nice way to do this would be the following. We know that if you've got current flowing over here, some of that current is gonna go this way and the rest of the current will go that way. So for example, if this is two amps and this is 0 0.5, then this would have to be 1.5. That is the way current splits up. So what we can maybe do is let us try and find how much current is gonna go through this branch here. Let's try work that out. Something else I want you to also remember before we do that is that Voltage in parallel is the same. So the voltage in this part is the same as the voltage in this part, okay? So the pink voltage is the same as the blue voltage. It doesn't mean that this voltage and this voltage is gonna be the same as this one. So for example, what I mean is, if this is three volts and this is two volt, I mean, sorry, if this is three volts, it doesn't mean that this is three volts and this is three volts. That's not what we mean. We mean that all of the voltages in this branch, the total will be the same as the voltage here. So if that's three volts and this is two volts, then that is one volt. That is what we mean. We're saying that the total here is three volts and the total here must be three volts, okay? So let's go and let's quickly go work out what the voltage will be in this branch. The way that we can easily do that is the following. We know that the total current flowing in the main part of the circuit. Let's do it in green actually. We know that the current flowing in that part is 1.07 amps. We calculated that in the previous question. So then what I can do is I can work out the, the, the voltage across this one. So I can say V equals to I times R. And so I can say I, which is 1.07 and the resistance is four. And if I work that out, I can get 4.28 volts, 4.28 volts. So that's the voltage across this one. So then what you've got to ask yourself is, the battery is giving away 12 volts. 4.28 volts are being used over here. So now if you take 12 minus 4.28, you end up with 7.72 volts. So that means that that would be for this branch, 7.72, and for this branch, 7.72 volts. So it looks like this. And then this whole voltage is also 7.72 volts. So what we can do now is we can look over here and we can work out the current flowing over there by using I equals to V over R. And so we can say that the current flowing there would be equal to its voltage divided by its resistance. And if you work this out, now I'm not gonna round off because this is not my final answer. So I'm gonna get 193 over 300 amps. So that is how much current is flowing through this branch. 
it's going to be 193 over 300. Then I know how much current is coming up here in the main circuit. That's 1.07. So then I can say 1.07 minus this value, and that will tell me how much is going in this piece over here, right? So if I want to work out the I in that top branch, then I can use V over R. Sorry, we're going to say, we're not going to do it though. We're going to say 1.07 minus 193 over 300. And that gives us, I'm not going to round off, not the final answer, 32 over 75 amps. So now all of a sudden, I know how much current is flowing through here. So that means I know how much current is flowing through the 10 ohm resistor as well. And so now I can use my power formula there. I'll choose this one because I know how much current is going through the 10 ohm, which is the 32 over 75. Remember to put it in a bracket and square it. And I know the resistance of that one is 10. And that gives us 1.28 watts. The next question says, calculate the total energy used by the circuit. So where do we get energy? Well, we know that power is equal to the amount of energy over time. Your teacher might say P is equal to W over T, or they might even use E for energy over time, but normally they'll use W. So if we can calculate the power, then we know the time because they've given us that, then we can easily get the energy. Now you might think, oh, well we can just use the previous answer because that's power but that was only the power of this device. They would like to know the total energy used by the circuit. So you can even just look at the battery that because that supplies all of the energy for the circuit. So I'm just gonna say P equals to VI because I know that the battery voltage is 12 and I know the current going through the battery or the total current in the circuit is 1.07. If I go work this out, I get 12.84 watts. So then I've got the power, so I can say P is equal to W over T, 12.84 um, is equal to the amount of energy, and then the time is 30. And so if I want to work out the energy, I can say 12.84 multiplied by 30. And so the amount of energy is going to be 385.20. And then the units of that will be joules. And now the last question says that the 12 ohm resistor is removed from the circuit. Okay, so we can imagine this one's going to be taken away. And so now what we have is a normal series circuit. Now you've got to be careful how you think about this question. Some of you might say, oh, well, if they're taking this resistor away, then this wire over here uh, this wire over here will have zero resistance and so all the current will go through there. That's not what they mean. What they mean is that this resistor is going to break. So this entire piece is, you can't go through there. It's broken, okay? So what this means is that all of the current is going to go through here. So what you must understand is that when you have resistors in parallel, you are allowing the electrons to have more pathways to flow. And so you're making the resistance very low whenever you open up a new parallel pathway. The more parallel pathways we have, the easier it will become for all of the electrons to be able to flow. So if we have more resistors in parallel, then the total resistance actually becomes less. That's important that you understand that. It's almost like this. Let's say there are people walking over here and then they would like to go inside the shop. They would like to go inside the shop. If the shop only has one door over there, it's gonna be a little bit difficult for all of the people to be able to go through one door. But if the shop or the person at the shop opens up two more doors like that, then all of a sudden 
there will be more pathways for the people to be able to go into the shop. That is exactly how resistance in parallel works. Okay, so when you add more resistors in parallel, you are going to make it more easy for the electricity to flow. So the, so the total resistance in the circuit is actually going to become less. Does this mean that the electricity will now be able to flow slower or faster? Well done if you can realize that this means that the total electricity can now flow much faster. Because if there's less resistance, think about what the word resistance means. It means that it makes it difficult for flowing to happen. So if you have less resistance, then the electricity can flow more easily. But now with this question, we've got to be careful. They said that they are going to remove. They're removing. I nearly forgot about that. So they're going to take this one away. So that's almost like the person at the shop saying, okay, we're just going to close this door. Think about that. If that person, if that shop owner just closes the door, is that going to make it easier or more difficult for the electricity or the people to flow? It's going to make it more difficult, right? And so when you take when you take a resistor in parallel away, you are actually making the total resistance in the circuit larger. So we are going to say, so, so if the total resistance becomes larger, then it becomes more difficult for the electricity to flow. And so the current will actually become less. The current, so the current will decrease. So we're going to say that the answer is decrease. Now, what's the reason? Because they said they must, we must please explain. So we'll say that the total resistance increases. We can then say that resistance is inversely proportional to current. What does that mean? It means that when the resistance goes up, the current goes down. And when the current goes up, or no, when the resistance goes down, then the current goes up. All right, so that's it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching.